Hey, today we're going to troubleshoot this sign. I have received it like this with the original American 110 volt core and coil transformer and running on 110 volts it's flickering. I have already unmounted the original transformer from this frame but it's still powering the sign right now. I'll stop the video here so you can relax your eyes. This flickering that you know from movies when there's a dark back street with a flickering neon sign and a crime is about to happen is an actual sign of failing neon with classic core and coil transformer and there's different possible causes. One cause that I'm ruling out here is a loose connection. Another would be that the transformer is just too small for the tubing length so it doesn't have enough output voltage. Then another possible cause is one of the tubes has reached the end of its lifespan. I'm showing how the voltage requirement of a neon sign tubes looks over lifespan. You see that the tube's life starts off with a bit higher voltage per foot, then we have a long period of hopefully many 10,000 hours of lower voltage operation, and towards the end of the tube life the curve will turn back up until it gets so high that the transformer can't strike it anymore. And usually in this EOL period it will also cause the tube, or at least the electrodes, running much hotter. I'll get back to this later in the video. Another possible cause for the flickering is that the transformer has failed, for example, through a winding fault. The windings are very tightly packed, and very thin and insulated with a super thin animal coating and due to aging or overloading the voltage can just strike through the animal and create faulty current paths in the windings that will change all the properties of the transformer. For a quick test I'm usually connecting one of my own electronic transformers to the sign and also in this case the 8K electronic transformers seem to operate the sign fine although the original 9K core and coil could not. When I have the sign successfully running with a spare transformer I carefully monitor it with a thermal camera. When there are no obvious critical hotspots then I let it run for 20 minutes or so and go through all the electrodes to check their temperatures. You often find a worn electrode like this because it gets much hotter than the others. All the electrodes on this sign were in nice range. The green tubes were a bit warmer but I think still okay. My personal limit is right about 100 Celsius or 210 Fahrenheit. Above that the tubes become suspicious. If you don't have a tool like this to measure you can also carefully use your fingers. The best thing would be to switch the sign off and then only get bring your fingers to the high voltage electrodes. You will find overheated parts with your uh, fingers this way too. When the electrodes are okay I take an overall thermal shot of the sign to see if one tube is much off the others in temperature. You must remember that smaller tube diameters on the same sign will be warmer and also red gas tubes will uh, always be a bit warmer than the same diameter blue gas tubes. But everything looks fine here and I'll say the faulty part this time was just the transformer. I have different theories of why I keep seeing American neon signs in Europe that have a, a burned out transformer. Well, um, in Europe we have 230 volt grid and the best way, still the best way to operate an American neon sign is this thing. It's a real transformer, although an auto transformer, that means it's not isolated. That makes a, a 110 or 120 volt output but it cannot convert the frequency and Europe has 50 Hz grid frequency while the US has 60 so there will be a remaining um, addition of losses in the transformer. I have a number in, my, in the back of my head of 10 to 20 percent more losses in the transformer when the American transformer is operated in Europe so it will heat up more but I think most of the transformers can deal with that quite alright. Then we have the worst way of uh, adapting a sign to Europe and that's this thing. Where's the camera? Here. So it's, it's just a plug adapter, it doesn't convert any voltages. There are one, some with a ground uh, prong, some without. If you plug an American sign in a European outlet with this, it's just, it will instantly uh, fry the sign. So. And then we have this intermediate solution here. Um, these things come in various sizes. This one is pretty big, it looks actually quite decent because it has a ground. Some of them are just like a a small heat sink with a plastic part with a, a plug and a jack, a power jack. Um, these are basically a dimmer with a fixed adjustment. So it's a, supplied by 230 volts, putting out 120 volts equivalent with a dimming circuit. And these are only suitable for purely resistive loads like light bulbs or heating elements. Sometimes that's on the label, sometimes it's in the manual. But many people who don't have a deeper electrical understanding 
don't read that or don't care about that but these are not suitable for any loads other than purely resistive and I'll show you uh, on the oscilloscope why. So I have set up a small uh, testing bench here and I have just connected a light bulb to an American plug and if I plug this in the auto transformer then it will operate at 115 volts. I have measured 115 volts under load here and I have measured the current with this true RMS uh, multimeter it's 300 milliamps. Uh, true RMS is important if you want to measure anything that is not sign shaped you will see this later on because only the true RMS meters can uh, correctly measure non sign shaped currents. So 300 milliamps going to this lamp. Now this um, adaption uh, transformer dimmer thing here has an adjustment knob and I would have assumed you can adjust it down and then up to the equivalent of 120 volts but you can overpower it. It goes like to the equivalent of 150 volts or whatever reason they made it that way because also that way you can still damage your purely resistive American load on that thing. So I have moved the plug over and adjusted the knob so there is also 300 milliamps true RMS flowing through the lamp that means the adjustment of this thing is just equal from the power that it gives to the lamp as this thing. Now if we look at the, the voltage shape with a scope pull out this plug a bit. Oh here I have set up a, a resistor divider to protect the input of the oscilloscope. One end is uh, grounded through the power grid ground and this is where the ground clamp of the oscilloscope is and the hot uh, the, the measuring input of the oscilloscope is after the first resistor and then after 10 high kilo ohm resistors there is this input where I'm giving the line voltage. Now if I go to the line voltage of the auto transformer you can see that we have a close to a nice sign shape. There is a bit of a damage on the edges maybe just uh, from the magnetic properties of the transformer. Now if we move the plug over to the electronic dimming device here and I will put the measuring clamp again here. Yeah, you see we have a very different shape of voltage. Although there is 300 milliamps RMS flowing through the lamp and it's putting out exactly the same power in watts and the same brightness as on this transformer but with a very different um, voltage shape and I'll show you why this is a problem. Here's a screenshot of the oscilloscope from the auto transformer output that has a nearly sign shaped waveform and I have put in colored markings. The red line is the RMS value just overlook the dot, uh, the decimal dot because I have this 1 to 10 resistor divider so we have an RMS voltage of 119 volts. The RMS or in, in German we say the effective value is the nominal value you talk about so you say I have a 120 volt outlet while the actual peak voltage of this blue line is 172 volts in this case and the factor between red and blue is the square root of 2 that is 1.41 so 119 times 1.41 is around about 172 volts. That means the highest um, voltage through the whole cycle that our neon transformer is receiving in this setup is uh, at the blue line the 172 volts for a short moment being transferred uh, in the ratio of the primary to secondary windings to the output uh, that powers the neon tubes. And now this is the crap that's coming out of this dimmer voltage adapter. You see that again we have an over time averaged we have an RMS voltage of 120 volts going out to the load but the waveform is so different that because of this uh, leading edge dimming that this thing does we have peaks of up to 320 volt two times per cycle going to the load so much more than the 170 volt that the proper 110 volt supply would have as peak and these 320 volts they are going through to the, the the neon transformer will suddenly be giving out peaks of almost 17,000 volts instead of the 9,000 volts it should so as I said over time the the power amount will be the same but the the voltage peaks will massively reduce the life of the tubes because they help in aging the electrodes much faster and also the output windings of the transformer as I said the thin wire that is coiled up with animal coating the higher voltage can much easier strike through this animal coating and damage the transformer so as maybe light bulbs or simple resistive 
devices may put these uh, voltage spikes away. Things like the insulation of the transformer, they will just suffer massively. So this plug is only suitable for, um, like if you have a laptop power supply with two prongs only, and the, the label of the power supply says 90 to 250 volts AC or something, then you can use these in Europe and they make some with a ground prong. But those are only for devices that and wires that themselves can stand 230 volts. It's not changing anything in, uh, in voltage. And these things are only for lamps and heating elements, although still a bit risky. I, I really would, would prefer just using this for anything in Europe. And I believe that my Coca-Cola sign transformer might have been fried because it has been operated on one of these. And luckily the electrodes look good because the current spikes can also de damage the electrodes pretty fast. But I have scratched off a bit of blackout paint and the electrodes look okay, don't have much sputtering. So if you buy a sign that comes with one of these in, in Europe, there's always a risk that the, the tubes are already worn down really bad because the electrodes have just been damaged through the current spikes through many hours of operation.